Hi guys, Colsey. Today I am going to be doing an entire PC build. Well, kind of. It's kind of a full build in the fact that um, it was recently Jake's birthday and he wanted to upgrade his PC for his birthday. That's what he wanted. So uh, we sorted out some parts for him to upgrade his PC uh, and then it was my job to then uh, upgrade it. Now, the parts he wanted to upgrade was the CPU and the motherboard. Arguably, in a PC build, when you're upgrading both of those things, it pretty much does involve completely taking apart the PC to replace those parts. The only thing pretty much that you don't touch is the power supply. You don't take that out and like hard drives and SSDs don't necessarily need to be taken out. But graphics cards, RAM, obviously the old motherboard and the old CPU and all that, that all needs taken out. It pretty much involves entirely taking apart a PC and then putting it back together. So I figured, obviously I'm gonna film this because I love tinkering around in PCs. We all know I love building them and playing around with them and messing about. It's just something nerdy that I enjoy. So obviously I filmed the process of me doing this also because uh, I've done a few PC builds in the past, but over time, I feel like I've got better at filming and just video creation. Hopefully I've got better over time anyway. Uh, so I figured it was it was probably time to do a little bit more of an up-to-date, I guess almost guide. I don't want to say guide because I am not a professional PC builder. That's why I have sponsors like Fierce PC. Because, you know, they are professional builders and they know exactly what they're doing. I am self-taught completely, uh, other than a little tiny bit at school we did once in IT. But I'm pretty much self-taught on, on building PCs, so don't necessarily take everything I do as the proper way to do it. Uh, if you want to build a PC the proper way, uh, get Fierce PC to do it. That's That would be my suggestion. But in general, I'm going to try and sort of talk you through uh, what I did here, what's the safe thing to do as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, all of that good stuff. I'm going to talk you through the building process and sort of explaining a little bit more to you about PCs, building them, the parts, etc, etc. That's the idea of today's video anyway. Let me start by just giving you the parts that Jake had and the parts that we're upgrading to. So, uh, like I said, we're upgrading CPU and motherboard. So, uh, in terms of CPU, it was my old i5 6600K that he had. We're upgrading him to uh, an i5 9400F from a sixth gen i5 Intel CPU to a ninth gen Intel i5 CPU. Uh, they've changed a lot since then, actually. Uh, they've gone from being quad cores to basically hex cores. So instead of having four cores, they have six cores. It means that they're generally better at running uh, games and they're just more powerful than they used to be, basically. Pretty decent upgrade for him. So we're upgrading to that CPU and we're again upgrading to a motherboard that fits that CPU socket. Pretty much straight swap, basically. Take the old motherboard out with the CPU on, put the new motherboard in with the new CPU on. It sounds simple. It takes a little bit longer than that. I don't need any of those wires for a keyboard, mouse, monitor, any of that stuff. Don't really need that because I'm gonna do the swap and then I'm gonna take it back upstairs, plug it back in upstairs just to test that everything has worked properly and I have installed everything correctly. Got a bit of a workspace. Uh, I'm at my mum's house, so I am using their coffee table. Just want to show off a little bit the the front panel this is a custom front panel that i got from fierce pc i won it before i was even affiliated with fierce pc uh, i won a competition which gave me a free pc basically uh, if you want to check that out i have done a video i did do a video when i got that that was very exciting so there's a video on my channel about that but this is a custom front panel it's me and jake and a, a spooky scary thing in the middle i think this was around when we were playing resident evil 7. First things first to get in, we need to take out these two screws on the side panel and then we're able to slide the panel off and we can get a good look at the inside. So cable management, not something special. Uh, I'm not great at that, but yeah, it's, it's in need of a clean at least. There's not necessarily a definite right order or a, a specific order that you have to do this in, uh, but this is the order that apparently I decided on the day to do this in. We could have taken the graphics card out 
first, I think. Uh, there's no reason why we really couldn't, but I decided to start by taking the RAM out. So there's some little clips at the edge of the RAM sticks. So you just wanna make sure they're unclipped and then the RAM should just pop out. Sometimes it's a little bit tight, but you should be fine. As long as you make sure those clips are undone, you should be fine to take out the RAM. And then we're gonna start unplugging cables. The red and the black cables here are for hard drives and SSDs. They are SATA cables. This is the power pin for the graphics card. So we're gonna take that out now. We need to remove the graphics card by unscrewing it from the bracket on the back. This keeps the graphics card stable uh, and you know nice and set. So we need to unscrew that. There'll be a latch on the actual uh, slot that it plugs into and we can push that, which uh, means that it releases the graphics card and you can lift it out. Next, we are unscrewing the motherboard from the case. Basically, if you're taking a motherboard out, you'll see where the screws are that attach it to the, to the actual case and then you wanna unscrew it. Now they tend to be on little stand Handoffs from the case and I believe that is due to uh, you don't want the, the metal of the motherboard touching the metal of the case because that might short things out so you have these little standoffs that keep it slightly raised from the case uh, so the motherboard sits on that and the screws screw into those standoffs to keep it kind of raised up a bit. Took the whole motherboard out and we don't need particularly to remove the uh, CPU and the fan because we're not reusing those we're not changing uh, CPU on this motherboard we're doing a completely new CPU and motherboard install so for the time being I have left that on there if I am going to reuse this which I am hoping to reuse this uh, then I will remove the fan and replace the um, thermal compound the thermal paste pretty much at this point we've got all the parts out we've got the RAM we've got the graphics card the motherboard they're all out there's a bunch of screws around because we're going to want to put this back together in a minute time to unbox the new motherboard and CPU so unboxing the motherboard, they come in this anti-static bag and we're going to have a nice look at this Ooh, fresh little motherboard. Time to unbox the CPU now. So these CPUs do come with a uh, heatsink with them. You can see on the bottom of this CPU heatsink, uh, we have the thermal paste already applied. If you're buying a new CPU that comes with a heatsink, it will generally have the thermal paste already applied. So you don't actually have to apply it yourself. Then we actually get to the CPU itself. Nice shiny new CPU. Okay, so installing the CPU, we wanna open this. There's a little lever that you need to undo. There's all the pins there. You gotta be very careful not to bend any of those. Make sure you get the CPU ran the right way. There are certain little notches and there's a little arrow in the bottom left corner of the CPU. You can just about see here. Remove that cover and then you are gonna to have to apply a little bit of pressure here when you're putting the CPU in and it doesn't feel good, but to get that lever just down and under, it does involve a little bit of pressure, but you should be fine. Next, we're gonna put on the heatsink and fan. Uh, obviously, we wanna make sure that this is on, otherwise the CPU is not gonna get cooled and the PC will not be happy with us. Generally, with these, you just push them through. I've always been told to do it in a diagonal pattern and it pops these little plastic bits through the back of the motherboard, through the holes, and uh, it just fits nicely. You should be able to feel it and it won't move. Then you gotta plug the, the CPU fan into the fan header. Next, we're gonna install the RAM because we can do that before we put it back in the case. So it's basically the opposite of what we did before. We make sure the clips are unclipped and then we apply a bit of pressure. Again, these can kind of be a little bit tough, but generally you should be fine as long as you make sure it's unclipped. That's pretty much all we can do right there before we start putting it back in the case anyway. The only other thing we wanna do before we do that is install the IO shield. It's a common thing I think in general, but especially for me that I forget to do this and then I put the motherboard in and you do everything up and you go, ah, damn it, I forgot to put that in. And you have to take it all out again. It's a pain in the butt. So uh, make sure you don't forget to pop this in. It comes with your motherboard uh, and they are specific to your motherboard because obviously they have cutouts where slots are. So they are different from motherboard to motherboard. So you don't necessarily need it. It's not the end of the world, but it does help to stop getting so much dust in your PC and stuff like that because it gives a little bit of uh, coverage. And then from this point onwards, it's pretty much the same as we've done before but backwards. So instead of taking out the motherboard, we put the motherboard in and we do up all the screws and we make sure we screw it into the standoffs uh, to make sure that's connected. And then we replug in 
all of the cables that we unplugged, all the SATA cables, the power cables, all of that stuff. Uh, obviously slotting the graphics card back in, uh, attaching it to the bracket that we unattached it from. Unattached? Detached. Not unattached, that's not a word. Making sure that everything uh, is plugged in correctly and where it should be. Again, you probably wanna, you might wanna follow the manual for your motherboard to make sure that you plug in everything where it should go. Uh, but generally, like I said, motherboards are pretty much, they have the same components on them. So it's just finding them and plugging the correct cable into that. Obviously during this, I made sure I cleaned out his PC a bit as well, cause it was a dusty boy. So I give it a bit of a clean. Uh, but then once we finished, we got a nice new upgraded clean motherboard. So that's pretty much it. That's the entire build done. Took me probably a couple hours. I was taking my time and trying not to rush it because don't want to rush these things. You want to be careful. If you're building your own PC, you've got to be very careful that you don't break any part while you're doing it because then that generally will void the warranty and you're not going to be able to get that replaced, which is why, you know, I always recommend that you go to a reputable builder if you're not confident in building PCs, like my pals at Fierce PC. They are professionals. They know what they're doing. Uh, I am not a professional. Uh, I just like having a go and I accept that if while I'm doing this I have a little bit of static and I static shock something like the motherboard and it completely breaks it then that's my fault and I knew that that was a risk. Things like static is uh, I guess the main risk obviously other than like dropping it or spilling something on it while you're making a PC but static is, is a risk which is why uh, motherboards and stuff come in anti-static bags same as graphics cards come in anti-static bags. They are, as it says in the name, to prevent static. It's not difficult building a PC. It's It can be nerve wracking if you're not used to it, which again is why I recommend you go to Fierce PC. Not only because of their professional nature, you get a warranty with it. So if anything does happen to go wrong, you are covered. Uh, also, their prices are genuinely very, very good. You're not gonna get much of a better deal by buying the parts and building it yourself. Plus it saves you time by buying from Fierce PC because it'll arrive at your door and ready to go. But I realized that people want to, might want to learn to build a PC, might want to even just learn to how to upgrade their PC in future by adding a graphics card, installing more RAM, or like I did here, replacing the CPU. If you want to just change the CPU, it's not very often that you're going to be able to change the CPU and keep the same motherboard. Uh, you can, sometimes I know that AMD have been pretty good with it for Ryzen up to now. Uh, I believe the next generation of Ryzen, you are going to have to have a new motherboard. But generally when you upgrade CPU, if, if you're like me and give it a few years before you upgrade, then you're probably going to need to buy a new motherboard as well, which means you're going to have to go through this similar process of taking everything out and changing it all over. All in all, it's not that bad. It's not that difficult of a thing to do. I mean, we plugged this in straight after uh, just to check it was all working. Everything worked fine. Uh, because I changed motherboard and CPU, this is another thing I should mention. Because I changed both motherboard and CPU, that's a fairly big component to change in a computer. It's effectively the brain of the computer you're changing. Jake's PC then didn't realize uh, that it had an activated Windows. When you change big components like that in a computer, sometimes Windows will be like, hey, this is a new computer, so your Windows is not activated anymore. So I think at the minute his Windows is not activated, so we'll probably have to buy a new code for that. You don't need to activate it anyway. You can play games and everything without it activated on the trial version, so don't worry about that. But just saying, just a warning that uh, Windows might say it's not activated. You haven't done anything wrong. Nothing is broken. It's just they don't want you to change computer too often and keep the same code because it looks dodgy. Computer, basically it thinks it's a new PC because you've changed such a major component. So pretty decent upgrade there for Jake. Uh, I know that he's kind of thinking about getting into some VR. So uh, him having that upgrade now will make VR just nice and smooth. You definitely notice some uh, increases in uh, FPS and stuff in games and just generally smoothness and everything is running nice. So uh, he's happy with his upgrade. Not like an incredibly massive upgrade. It's not like we upgraded him to like an i9 or anything mental like that. You know, budget is still uh, very much something that we have to consider, but yeah, he's definitely got a decent upgrade there. It should last him for a good couple of years before he even thinks about upgrading his CPU again. Enough blabbering from me. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful and useful to some people. I hope that it's explained a little more uh, about how PCs are built, I guess, or how to change parts in your PC, how to upgrade. I would recommend if you don't know anything about this, this is the first time you've ever looked at building a PC, uh, then I would probably recommend that you go to Fierce PC uh, and use uh, a certain code. 
maybe and buy a PC from them. And then in future, if you're looking to upgrade, then uh, following a video like this should help you uh, go from a completely fully professional built PC and you might be able to change the graphics card and stuff yourself. But I wouldn't recommend the first time using, first time getting a PC, building it yourself necessarily, unless you are very, very confident in what you're doing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. If you'd like to see me do more sort of full builds like this, then please do let me know because obviously it's something that I don't get a chance to do super often because buying computers and components is kind of expensive but then if i do upgrade in the future or i do build another pc for any reason then uh, i'll be sure to make a video on it if you guys want to see that anyway thank you guys for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye